You know what, the real winners tonight are the Singaporeans. Uh, where did they go wrong? I think for the Luxor, I needed a little bit more coconut, a little bit more spice. It's tough to get up to speed in 48 hours to how good these dishes are. But for me, what I'm taking home is another confirmation to how good these hawkers food is and what it stands for. And I think even when I came 15 years ago, I fell in love with it then. So that's before I won three Michelin stars. I won three Michelin stars, I come back and they still kick my ass. I'm pleased with the chili crab. Uh, that for me was lovely. Looking at the percentages, you know, 5% between the votes, especially uh, the chicken rice, that's a, that's a hallmark. So I was, uh, I, was, I was excited. I was excited for the hawkers as well because, I mean, the intensity of cooking is hard enough. To do it in front of, somebody said there's 4,900 people here. That's insane. Insane. Uh, good question. The most difficult dish, all three of them were difficult for me. Okay, um, I'm a Westerner. I was born in Scotland. I grew up with fish and chips and steak and kidney pie. Uh, I lived and trained in France with some of the best chefs anywhere in the world. Over here is a completely different market because there's that level of humbleness. We have street food in England and there's hot dogs and burgers. We have the odd taco van, but we don't have street food quite as unique as this. So for me, the most difficult dish, I think, would be the, uh, yeah, the laksa. The luxa. That was a, a tough one because there's so many variations. And the tofu, the coconut, the paste, the shrimp. And so I, I, I was struggling. I knew within the first 45 minutes that we were slightly running behind on that. Uh, and I changed the recipe, which may have been a bit of a dumb thing to do. But <laughs> hey, you know, 2 1, like I said, uh, I'm over the moon. What um, other Singaporean dishes have you heard about that you really want to try to make? Oh, I mean, that's, uh, you, know, that's, you know, the curries are unique, uh, the rice dish is extraordinary, um, the fish dishes for me has that kind of Indian you know, influence from Kerala, that light spice flavour, so you know, there's, a, there's a repertoire uh, untapped here that is a hidden gem and these stalls don't look that glamorous, but forget the stalls, get your ass on the tables and enjoy the food because honestly, no disrespect, I've eaten in some fine dining establishments since I've been here and the food, you know, there's not a patch on what these guys are serving. No tablecloths, no fancy wine cellars, not 25 waiters hovering over you, pouring water every 30 seconds. If you want the real food in Singapore, get yourself to a hawker stall. That's my message tonight. And it may have been a blessing in disguise. I've been put to the test. Someone mentioned earlier, this is about your brand. It's got nothing to do with my brand. This, for me, was about highlighting how good I've always thought Singapore in hawker's food is. And I looked at what happened in Japan recently with the Michelin Guide and how all these shopping malls were getting absolutely renowned and fully booked for three months in advance. Well then there's a few guides globally that need to wake up and understand what's going on in the streets of Singapore. Tonight proved that. But I'm happy with my chili crab. I've got a gold pair of chopsticks. If my mother saw me with a gold pair of chopsticks, she would give me a kick up the ass. What are you going to do with gold chopsticks? What's your favorite Singaporean food so far? My favorite Singaporean food? Um, even in the markets, okay? You see the aerated tanks, the fresh crabs, the lobsters, the shrimp, everything's fresh. Last time I saw that kind of uniqueness was when I was in Vietnam, when they were having fresh produce for lunch, fresh produce for dinner. Didn't have room for refrigerations at home. Here's exactly the same. So, you know, that chili crab for me, uh, I fell in love with that. Yes, it's messy. Not the perfect dinner for a date, okay? Because you've got to wear a bib and then you want to hold hands with your partner, then you want to try and kiss her and you've got a mouthful of ketchup, chili, ginger. Not attractive, however, if you're both eating it, then that's fine. So where would you bring a date then? Where do I bring my wife? I'd bring her here to that lovely hawker's market. Oh, Madame Fu. Like I said, that for me was amazing. The chicken rice, mind-blowing. The attention to detail, the rock salt, the chicken fat inside that rice, the seasoning was extraordinary. So, do you know what? Even 40 minutes in to tonight's competition, I ran back here and I was tasting mine, sneaking a pot of hers and looking at the comparisons. And I knew then, okay, we had to up our game. But we're 5% down. Luxor, exactly the same. Taste, taste, taste. Uh, crazy for it. Next time, give me a little bit longer. I'm not making excuses, because we lost, okay? Uh, I'm going to take it on the chin. Sometimes, chefs need to be knocked back. Knocked back in their box. I haven't been knocked back in my box. It's just another confirmation to how good I've always thought this food has been.
So what do you think about the um, three Singaporean dishes and do you have any intentions to bring them back to, the, to England? I'm actively looking for a restaurant in Singapore. Oh. I cannot wait to uh, open up here. And if you think that I'm going to bring some fancy poncy French food to Singapore, uh, there'd be a riot. Uh, I've learned a lot. I haven't stopped learning. But like I said, you introduce our food to UK? I have a restaurant called Maze in London, and it's a sort of Asian influence uh, combined with a French sort of historicness. Uh, I've got about four ideas already working with chili crab. I'm flying in an hour's time. I land tomorrow morning at 7.30, I go to a sports day, and then I spend the rest of the week with my children, and then um, next Saturday I'm going to be in New York. Already, I've dreamt of three dishes in the last half hour. The only problem I've got is what in the hell do I do with those gold chopsticks? Does anyone want them? No. <laughs> Give them to your wife to tie her hair. To tie her hair. That's a good idea. Question. Darling. What did you say to them? What did I say to them? Uh, listen, you know, they, they were instrumental, okay, in giving away some of their secrets. Chefs are obsessed with other chefs beating them. But to see the generosity and the way they treated me inside their hawker stalls, and I'm the disruption. You know, I'm the one that is turning their little world upside down and being a pain in their ass. So for them to still be that gratifying and tell me how to cook their food, honestly, it's, uh, it's humbling. I mean, really humbling. Forget the corporate stuff. Forget the sponsors. This was about them. And uh, tonight showed. I mean, really. And here's how obsessed I am. So the chili crab, we won by 5%. The luxa, I got my ass kicked by 19%. And the chicken rice, I got my ass kicked by 6%. So Team Singapore versus Team GR, we lost by 6%. That was like my old school report. Not bad, but could do better. Get, get back in your box. Thank you, everybody. Take care and God bless.